Hello, I am Alberto Ross, and in this video, I will talk about a cost effective entangling perfecter for instructions. Work done with Alessandra Jimborean, both of us from the University of Murcia in Spain. Server and cloud applications are getting larger, and they are far from fitting in the low one instruction cache. The latency required to fetch instructions is increasing. And this cause causes stalls in the processor front end and ultimately performance degradation. Prefetching instructions is a fundamental technique for performance. Even when a decoupled front end, which fetches instructions ahead of time based on information from the branch predictor, is implemented. Our contribution is an entangled prefetcher for instructions. Entangling is a kind of correlation, which is based on latency. Instead of correlating consecutive accesses or misses, it's correlating accesses that are at different distances based on the latency entailed by them. The Entangling Prefecture was the winner of the first Instruction Prefetching Championship. We will present here a cost-effective version of that entangling prefecture, and we release our prefetching code uh, in the link below. Our motivation is timeliness. Ideally, assuming that this is a timeline, we want that every access done by the processor becomes a hit in the L1 instruction cache. But sometimes the instructions will not be there and we need to find the block in the memory hierarchy. This takes a latency that can be larger or shorter depending on where the cache block is found in the memory hierarchy. So we can compute this latency and go back in time to know when we should issue this time limit. If we issue the prefetch at this point, based on the latency that we compute, the cache line will be filled in the one instruction cache, and the access will become a hit. If we do this for all misses, we will have a coverage of 100%. And if we only do for misses, we have an accuracy of 100%. So no wasting traffic will be performed. So let's explain now the concept of entangled accesses. The core is going to request instruction L, so access L1, and it misses in the cache, and it waits some latency until the cache line is filled in the one cache and the access is done. We compute this latency, we go back in time, and we know when we should prefetch L. But the question here is, uh, and we prefetch L such that the miss uh, becomes a hit. But the question here is, when do we prefetch L if the access will happen before, will happen after, sorry. Fortunately, we have other accesses that happen before L, and we can relate this event of prefetch to one of these other, uh, accesses, in particular, the previous one to hit. This way we can entangle access B with access L. Access B will be the source, access L will be the destination. Next time that the processor access B, we will issue the prefetch for L. And therefore, we will have a timely prefetch for L. The name of entangle is based on, is inspired by the quantum entanglement, entanglement and that's what we call this prefetcher the entangling prefetcher for instructions. But entangling each pair of accesses will require a huge structure to keep track of all of those pairs. So what we do is to entangle head of basic blocks. Basic block is, in the, is a runtime basic block. So let's see, for example, this code. We have A, B, C, D, E that are consecutive instructions. And E is a branch that jump to access L. They fit in these three cast lines, A, in the second cast line, B, C, D, 
and then E, and then the branch that goes 12. So since these are consecutive, we call this a basic block at runtime. And L will be a different basic block. We will not entangle, therefore, the access B with the access L, but the head of the basic block of L with the head of the basic block of A, of B, which is A. Okay. So this cast line will be the source and will be entangled with this cast line that will be the destination. This time this cast line is access, we will trigger the prefetch for the destination. So what to prefetch when we access A? It's not just the entangle, but the whole basic block. So when we access A, we will prefetch the whole basic block of A. Then the entangle destination L and the whole basic block. And if there were more entangled pairs to this access A, we will prefetch it too. Looks like too much prefetching? Not actually. So we have a maximum uh, destinations per source of six. And the maximum basic block size is 64. Many times we access cast lines that are not even the basic block, so we entail zero uh, prefetches. And sometimes we access the head of the basic block and we use a number of prefetches ranging from nine for uh, several applications or to uh, 17. So this is the concept of entangling prefetcher, and I'm going to explain all the implementation. Here we have an L1 instruction cache, eight ways, 32 kilobytes we use in our simulation. When we have an access, first thing that we do is find the basic block. So we use two registers, one to track the head of the basic block, the, the address of the head, and the current size of the basic block. So for example, when we access A, then B, C, D, they will be in the same basic block. So if we access B and then we access C, they belong to the same line and we don't do any modification in these two registers. But if we access D and then we access E, we will notice that it's the next cast line, it's the cast line plus one, and then we increase the size. When none of these two cases happen, we will say that it's a new basic block. So we copy the size into a structure where we track uh, what we learn, which is the entangled tip. In this case, we will track that the head of basic block A has a size for the basic block of two more uh, cast lines. We have already the information about the basic blocks. Now we need to find the information about the entangled pairs. We will follow the same example as we depicted before. So we have here, uh, we want to have the prefetch L exactly at this point. So the first time, access L with missing the cast. And what we need to do, um, I forgot to mention that all the gray part is the information that we add uh, to this uh, cache. So when we have a miss in the MSHR, we will add a timestamp for that miss. So the current cycle that is happening. When the miss is solved and it's filled, the cast line is filled into the L1, we can compute the latency based on the current time and the time that we store. So with the latency, we can go back in time here and we need to find which is the access that we will track, we will use at the source. For that, we use a history buffer. A history buffer, we insert all the head of basic blocks. So here, when we go back in time, we will find not the access C, not the access B, but the access A, which was the head of the previous basic blocks. And we can entangle A with L. When we find this pair, we store it, we keep, uh, we take A along with L and we store it in the entangled table. So A is a source and we'll have a destination, first destination L. 
no, we can issue the prefetches. So on each access, we check the entangle table. We, if there is a match, we can predict that it's ahead of a basic block. And um, in this case, we will fetch the two next addresses of A and L and the next and the basic block of L. All these prefetches are stored in the prefetch queue that first check the L1 cache for a hit. If not, we'll go to the next cache level. So we also need to fix late prefetches. What that means? So on when we issue a prefetch and the access for that cache line comes, comes before it's filled, we need to know which was the actual latency for bringing L into the cache. So we store also the timestamp in the prefetch queue and it's transmitted to the MSHR in case the prefetch miss the cache. This way, when the access come, we'll hit in the MSHR, we'll coalesce, and we will know the time actually. First, we, we will know that this was a late prefetch, and second, we will know that uh, the time that the access started or the miss started was the one copied from the prefetch queue. But we need to adapt our information, our entangled pairs. And for that, we use a two bit saturated counter per entangled pair. It's two bits, so if the value is three, it's the maximum. And it's the one that we use when we add a new pair, because we know that that pair has been timely for the recent execution. If there is a late prefetcher, we just a late pre prefetch or a wrong prefetch, that means went to the cast, the prefetch went to the cast and exit was being accessed. accessed. Uh, then we will decrease, decrease the counter. And if there is a hit prefetch, so an access finding the cast, one line that was brought by the prefetcher, then we increase the confidence. Zero confidence means like the tangled pair will be married. For updating this information, we need the access bit to know if the um, uh, line has been accessed by the core or re just prefetched by the prefetching engine. And then tangled source, because we need to locate, in this case, the tangled source will be A, so we need to locate for the cast line L, uh, that is A, the, the source that uh, uh, issue that prefetch in order to adjust the confidence. Finally, we do merging of basic blocks. That means two basic blocks that are not consecutive, but they share some cast lines can be merged into one basic block. For that, we use a basic block size structure. So yes, along with the history, we can add the basic block size uh, and we can compute my address plus my size is this other address in between these two values and then I can merge these two into one bigger basic block. Finally, this is the design of the entangling prefecture. And as I mentioned, the gray areas are the ones that we have. The entangled, the entangled table, uh, the information about the entangled pairs can be compressed. So in first uh, uh, time, we can think that we need 58 bits for an address, for a cast line address. We are considering virtual addresses here and, uh, and there are 64 bits therefore. Um, and then two bits for the confidence. And this makes 60 bits. But with 60 bits, 60 is a nice number because we can divide it by two, three, four, five, six. And then we can divide this information, for example, into two so that we only store 28 bits of the destination. Uh, and we can, with the same entry, we can store two destinations instead of, of one. This compression is based that the source of the destination usually share the less, the most significant bits. And then we don't need to store them. So in case the most significant bits match, we can, we, can use modes to and only store 28 bits. We can we have six modes, that's why we use three bits for the mode, and we can have up to six entangled destinations as long 
as they don't say more than eight, uh, they have uh, at least uh, maximum eight different less significant bits with respect to the source. Muy to talk now about the methodology, we use Jamsim, the developed branch, as it was in November 2020, by the ISCA deadline. And uh, our baseline is a sunny code like system that implements a decoupled front end with a 64 entry fetch queue, and we have a 32 kilobyte cell one cache. Our two tables in the tangled uh, prefecture is the history buffer, which only has 16 entries, and the entangled table, which is a huge structure that we use uh, for two K entries, four K entries, or eight K entries. We run almost 1,000 traces from the championship value prediction provided by Qualcomm. So the uh, prefetching competition, the instruction prefetching competition use this, uh, some of the traces from the championship value prediction too. So we extend our uh, set of uh, traces and we selected the ones that have at least one uh, kilo misses per um, uh, one miss per kilo instructions. Um, and we, in the paper, we analyze for virtual and physical addresses, but we will show only numbers for virtual prefetching. So here in this table, we have the IPC in the Y axis, uh, geometric mean, and the uh, uh, amount of storage required by the prefetcher. We can see that an API prefecher we can get 12% improvements and doubling or tripling, tripling the size of the L1 gives very small improvements, one or less than 2%. An excellent prefecture does not work very well, polluted the cache and is, does not get any performance in, improve, improvement, even if the size that it requires is zero. We also evaluate our tip by Coli et al. in Micro 13, uh, which is state of the art pre pre prefecture. And even more recently, uh, the work by Ansari et al. at ISCA 20 and extended at the IPC, uh, the Instruction Prefecture uh, Championship. Um, we also run the prefecture here in red, the, two, the three top prefecture for the Instruction Prefecture Championship. Uh, that uh, were around 128 kilobytes or of area storage. You can see that the Dunkling Prefecture was the most better performance one. And uh, finally, our um, cost effective implementation of the Dunkling Prefecture for two, four, and eight kilo entries. We can see that for eight kilo entries, we get almost 10% improvement, very close to the ideal for a size of 40 kilobytes. We get a coverage uh, of uh, 87% and accuracy of 71% between all, their, um, all the other prefetches that we evaluate. So as a conclusion, Timely is a key property for prefetching. Our prefetcher entangles head of basic blocks to trigger timely prefetches, and it obtains near ideal performance with just four kilobytes of extra storage. Thank you for watching, and I'll be happy to see you at session 2A, Microarchitecture 1, at ISCA 21. Thank you again.